Hey YouTube, Salifias42. I uh, just want to say hi, long time no see, and uh, thank you to all of my new subscribers who have uh, joined in the couple of months that it's been since I last made a video. And uh, thank you to my old subscribers who have stuck around even during the entire time of me not making videos. I appreciate that a lot. and. Uh, you know, I hope to be doing things more often. I'm in the new house now and starting to get settled down a little bit. Don't have any internet there yet, so I'm just doing this from the iPhone. But, uh, uh, oh my god, it's Chris. Started off this, well, not started off, but put her feet into this whole determinism versus free will debate. And, uh, conference report has been talking about it quite a bit. Which, you know, good autumn, good autumn. Uh, but in one of his most recent videos, oh, pardon me, he said uh, that uh, in response to Pyro, that, You know, this, this idea of free will is a, a faith-based thing. Um, that it's akin to this idea of God and whatnot. And ultimately, in terms of, of, of keeping the whole thing intellectually honest, I, I would say that yes, that's, that's definitely you know, a possibility, but so is determinism. Um, this whole idea of determinism, in my opinion, is completely 100% pseudoscience. Um, first, there's, it's based off of uh, an argument from Newtonian physics, which, while conference report Fred makes very good points about how, at our scale, Newtonian physics would be the thing that would apply, we also know that there are other scales involved where other physics do apply. And uh, it, it, it's not 100% uh, established whether or not uh, any of these other scales do apply. And with quantum mechanics, we, we, we you know, have this supposition that there is the possibility of randomness. So when we have this other alternative, uh, this basically makes determinism as an absolute position untenable. Now, one of the uh, other things that's used in this argument, sorry about that guys, is uh, the Leibniz experiment, which personally I think it's, it's a little bit dis disingenuous on the parts of the people who use the Leibniz experiment as evidence, uh, predominantly because of the uh, methodology of the experiment itself. Um, at least in terms of this whole free will versus de de determinism debate. Um, the reason I say that is because first the, the, the subjects of the experiment were told to act when they felt the urge, which is not necessarily a, a, a case of exercising of choice or free will. It's just, you know, it is a very deterministic, you know, okay, I feel the urge, now I'm going to act. Then on top of that, there is uh, what Leibniz himself called the free won't, which was uh, the, 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 that he found that there was a, a window where a person could consciously negate the action. Um, which, when you're talking about the buildup of readiness potential as the, the uh, deterministic indicator, First of all, there would be an evolutionary advantage to uh, being ready, physically ready to act before, you know, being totally mentally ready to act. It, it, it's kind of akin to like the mental version of a cat readying to pounce uh, before it actually does so. So, not only that, but this is a situation where people are in a situation where they are going, where they know they are eventually going to act. So, 
for the readiness potential to be building before a, a, a supposedly, you know, before the supposedly conscious decision is made, there's just, there's, there's a lot of questions that I have about using that as, as an absolute. I mean, so if we're going to talk about determinism as a scientific hypothesis, first of all, we have a lot of problems. Um, it's unmeasurable. There is, the, the technology simply is not there uh, to be able to completely map a person's neural pathways and which portions of the brain lighting up lead to which kind of subjective experience in terms of what thoughts they're having or what feelings they have or, or, or th something along those lines. So yeah, we, you, you'd have to have, in order to make something like that measurable with our current technology, you would have to have uh, so many probes and gadgets and everything else hooked up to them that really, even though we're not talking on a quantum level, we're talking about something that is such an invasive form of measurement that Heisenberg's uncertainty principle very well could apply. Now, due to this lack of being able to measure, it, this makes this whole thing completely untestable anyway. I mean, even if we had the technology, in order to be able to do something like that, you'd basically have to hook an infant up to all of these gadgets from birth and follow them through their entire lives, uh, making sure that, uh, you know, every single circumstance and pattern and... and, and or brain light up pattern and, and event are being documented thoroughly uh, along with an honest subjective report of what the person is actually thinking about. And then to be able to turn around and after the, that data has been collected be able to make a reliable prediction. I mean, that is how the scientific method works, right? Um, and as, as the final nail in the coffin for this as, as a pseudo-scientific philosophy, um, you know, I'm not saying it's an unreasonable philosophy to hold, but let's just call it what it is. Um, but the final nail in the co coffin is then that it's... it's uh, what's the word I'm looking for? unfalsifiable. It's unfalsifiable. Because any time that the prediction doesn't go as, you know, isn't correct, the goalpost is going to move. Hidden variables, hidden variables, hidden variables. That's going to be the excuse every time it wouldn't work. So with, with these three characteristics, it, it, it's, I don't know, you call it... You, to be able to call it a, a, a scientific, you know, position is, is just, you know, blatantly dishonest, if you really ask me. But uh, those are just my thoughts on the subject. Let me know what you think. Rate, comment, subscribe, all that other fun stuff, and I'll talk to you later.